and welcome to New York City. Get ready to take a bite out of the Big Apple with me, your host, Veronica Fomee. Here's what's coming up on the show. You're the disease and the cure. <laughs> awesome. What would I say to my younger self? You're gonna meet taller guys. <laughs> It may be cold on my side of the world, but we're about to heat things up with that fresh state of mind. So let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> Kia ora, we are the cast and crew of Daphne, and we are... Keeping it fresh! Without giving too much away, um, our Daphne is like a celebration of life. The plotline in the South is that Daphne, it's her 30th birthday, and she makes this grand announcement to all of her friends and family that it'll be her last birthday ever. You're invited to my last birthday ever. And to her whole family, the, whole, the play is about her whole family trying to change her mind. And that's pretty much the play in a nutshell. Okay, where are we going? Surprise, I told you guys, just wait. Oh, yeah, I've got family at the club, I've got it surprises. <laughs> um, I play Daphne. Daphne is a weeaboo baker. She's a K-pop fan. She's a J-pop fan. She's an anime fan. She's a, like, she's just a fanatic of everything. She's a businesswoman, and she's very motivated and ambitious. And I play the role of Damien. He is a gentle-hearted young soul, and he loves his family. Oh, Daphne is... At its centre is about family and love and loss and how Pacifica families specifically deal with mental health. Yeah, I think uh, the most important theme in the show, um, yeah, is really um, encouraging yeah, our Pacifica families to talk about mental health and well-being. What we're working towards is a conversation that our audience members have in their cars when they drive home. If we're able to have um, people just start having those conversations, and that's a win for us. does take a village um, to tell a village story. Um, but through this process and throughout the last couple of years, I've really realized that actually it's bigger than me, it's bigger than just one person, it's our whole community and it's our whole entire village. And because it is um, a, a, a conversation that, that our village needs to have, then our village needs to start that conversation. If you want our children to feel loved, you have to speak their language. So like this play is like a, it's like an offering to those families to say, actually, it's okay to talk about these things. Mm. And normalizing yeah. the conversation at yeah. home about these difficult topics, you know. Yeah. And if a kid yeah, is able to share their truth without, without um, feeling unsafe mm. with their parents, mm. then it's a win. Um, it was really emotional, as um, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guys, but um, it really touched close to home. Amazing show, um, a lot of heart and emotion. This show broke, broke me. It took tears. Oh, and it left on my skirt. Keep it fresh. Check out the creative natives who are doing the mahi to keep the cultural treats alive. The 
the Pacific Climate Warriors are a collective of activists, of artists, of grassroots workers, of community organizers and educators who are all just ordinary people living in the islands and within the diasporas of the islands um, who are very concerned about climate change and who want to do everything they can to fight for their Pacific Islands. This generation is drawing the line here. No more excuses, no more unmeasurable targets, no more corporate bullying, no more silencing our voices. No more putting profits before our future. Um. Something that the Pacific Climate Warriors uh, organized actually a couple months ago was to try and get more Pacific Islanders out to the climate strikes. We saw the strikes last year didn't have many Pacific Islanders show up. A lot of our young youth and our young indigenous and brown youth don't feel like the climate space or the environmental space is somewhere for them to be because it has been dominated in the past by Palangis, by Pakeha. Um, and you know it's never been a movement that had many brown voices involved and so this year we wanted to make sure that all our pacific islander youth feel like that was a space for them yeah so um why i chose to be involved with the pacific climate warriors specifically um rather than the, the plethora of other organizations um was because it had the word pacific climate justice is important to the pacific because um, they're literally facing the harshest consequences. Our islands are literally sinking. The water is literally um, swallowing our islands. And our people's stories and their, our leaders aren't being involved with the conversations that are happening on the other side of the world. Why? I don't know. And that's crazy. And I see that as an injustice. And I see that our people should be in those conversations. And that, is, that, that, that to me is the injustice. We often look at textbooks and think, wow, like, we come from such a great line of people and our ancestors were amazing. While now you can be those ancestors, your descendants are depending on it and the choices you make today will really write the history of tomorrow. More of the Concrete Jungle with V the Stallion when we come back after the break. <laughs> you know, it's the fashion capital of the world. And as a Polynesian, those things seem very far-fetched. In my heart, I was like, I want to be the first. Your one minute starts now. Mama always said, stupid is as stupid does. Someone running and just telling him to run. What would I say to my younger self? That everything's gonna be okay. You're gonna meet taller guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Fresh. My name is Veronica Pombe. Welcome to my city, my home, my world. Booyah! Drop the world. Nah, I ain't never gonna drop it. I ain't never gonna stop it. I ain't never gonna let it go. The one thing I love about being Tongan is the way that we're raised to treat one another. Also, the one thing that makes me the most unique in my industry. <laughs> I wouldn't have a story to tell if it wasn't for me being from the South Pacific. I think growing up Polynesian, you're exposed to dance and music, just like the whole idea of performing. Growing up, I've always been around that, and I think that naturally, I just gravitated towards those things, because I definitely thought I was gonna be a singer, a dancer. <laughs> I don't know who I thought I was. <laughs> I feel like now it starts to make so much more sense why I am so in tune with myself. I officially became an entrepreneur as of last year, and um, it's everything that involves what I am passionate about as far as bridging community volunteerism with fashion. I traveled a lot for work back and forth in 2016. I just felt like the next step in my career, if I wanted to really take it serious, was to be in New York and be amongst the greats. You know, it's the fashion capital of the world. And as a Polynesian, those things seem very far-fetched. 
in my heart, I was like, I want to be the first. I was selected as one of the top six to be featured. I was the only uh, plus size woman and the only woman of color in the six. Probably like turning point in my career because it just helped me step into my own space of being in a position of in to influence people and to help people really become more unapologetic. I'm still trying to figure it out all myself, and this is kind of a journey that I've allowed people to kind of walk with me on so that they can see firsthand that it's not easy. You know, for a lot of girls, it does come easy. You know, they might have the look, they might have the body, they might have some money backing them up. Um, you know, there's all these different things that work in their favor, but for me, it's like, you know, literally you're getting it out the mud. I'm definitely proud to be part of this shift that's happening in the industry where there's more conversations about being inclusive, there's more conversations about being diversified, um, and also shifting the, the beauty standard. Obviously, my job as a model is to engage you, but then once I have your attention, um, that's where you know the social responsibility comes in and um, you know I just have to share more about what I think is important. Hey everyone, Veronica Bomet here, and I'm so excited to be joining forces with Model Mafia to raise awareness on climate change. 10 centuries worth of my ancestral history could be wiped out due to rising sea levels caused by climate change. So I'm definitely using my platform, bridging that gap of, you know, fashion, uh, entertainment, performance with activism is the new wave, it's the new shift. And I think I've always been super, you know, grounded in my purpose and understanding that I'm more than my body, I'm more than just like my face. I have a mind, I have an opinion. You know, I'm just being led with love. And everything else will fall in line. <laughs> Tato, my name is West. I'm an actor, dancer, and stuntman living here in Papete, Tahiti. Now I want to show you around my favorite place, the marketplace in Papete. So come on, I have five fresh tips for you, so let's go shopping. Hey, remember, whenever you're at the marketplace, do you want to stay hydrated? The best way to get hydrated is with the natural way, ice cold. It's called the Papete Ha'ari. That's good. Ah, just what I was looking for, a basket. We're really ready to go shopping. Can't ever have enough baskets. The marketplace here is a great place to find pearls at a great price. All the pearls have different colors. And he, what he's telling me is, you can tell the difference in colors between them. So he tells me in his island, it's a different color because the water is colder in his island than the, in the Tuamoto Islands. Very interesting. Hello, hello. You think this hair comes naturally, this beautiful bronze skin? No, no, no. Gotta come to this guy. Every morning, oil in the hair, oil on the skin, Oil everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most famous brand right here, the Monoi Tahiti. But I got to tell you guys a secret. The best kind is the homemade ones, the ones they make right in their own yard with their own coconuts. So now we filled up our bag over here at the marketplace with a lot of good stuff oils, pearls, necklaces. Now I'm getting a little bit hungry. So let's head over to the food place. The best part about the marketplace here in Papete. You get such a great variety of fruits. Apple, uru, grapefruit, canamon, star fruit. You have all the varieties of bananas you want. My favorite is the rima rima because you can eat them just right, right here. Right. And don't forget the raw fish. That's my favorite, sashimi. 
Now I'm gonna grab my horse and head on home. Na na. Hope to see you after the break for more fresh things. Great comeback by you guys. Well, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the face. <laughs> Fresh. It's your girl Veronica Bolton Air representing for all the freshies here in New York City from the catwalk to the sidewalk. Keep it fresh, boo. Hey, Milo and Lily, and welcome back to your favorite game show, How Fresh Are You? And on this side, we've got the power couple, we've got Tree and Swiss, and what's the name of your team today? Team Manu. Team Manu. All right, let's give a big hand. Team over here, the Sons of Sound. We got Ross and Sam. What's the name of your team today? Team Sons. Two Team Sons. Let's give a big hey. Okay, Team Sons, Team Manu. Hope you're ready. We're gonna start with Rapid Fire. And our first question for today is: Which Pacific island is mostly famous for the coconut crab? Yes. New Way. New Way? Is it New Way? That's correct. Our answer is New Way. Very popular for a coconut crab. Stephen Adams. What nationality is he? Which Pacific island he come from? Yes, uh, team. Tonga. 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 OK. <laughs> That's right. His Pacific island heritage is Tonga. Mr. Stephen Adams. What Tom Hanks movie in 2000 was filmed on the Fijian island, Monoriki? Yes. Was it uh, Castaway? That is correct. Yeah. That is yeah. Castaway. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. to Team Sun. <laughs> Great comeback by you guys. Well, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the face. <laughs> In the far north of New Zealand, what is the spiritual name for New Zealand's largest tree? Team Sun. The tree's name is Tane Mahuta. And that is your answer for the largest tree in New Zealand. Ooh, the spiritual yeah. name is Tane Mahuta. What is the name of Dwayne Johnson, the Rock's grandfather, who was a famous wrestler? What was his wrestling name? Rocky Maiava. Yes. Oh, what? That was Rocky Maivia. Peter Maivia. Yes, and uh, the, but the full name? Uh, High Chief Peter Maivia. All right, there you have it. High Chief. Okay, and for our final question of our rapid fire, what is new wear also known as? Ah, uh, yes, uh, tree. The rock. The rock. That is correct. Let's give a big hand for these teams, Team Sons, Team Manu, and currently at the moment it is equal 60 points here, 60 points here, and now we're going to move to our next game, Take Me Hollywood. Yeah. And this is where we have a famous quote from a famous movie. You have to guess it, but they will have to act it as a character that I give them. So let's go! <laughs> and first up, we have Team Sons. And Team Sons, who is going to act on your behalf? Sam. OK, Sam, if you can come to the front. Your character is Donald Trump, and your one minute starts now. My father was a lighthouse keeper. My mother was a queen. They never meant to meet, meet, but their love saved the world. What movie is it? Can I pass? Here you go, next one. You're the disease, I'm the cure. <laughs> pass. Enough. You are all of you beneath me. I am God, you dull creature and I will not be bullied by... Rah! Oh, Avengers. Yes! Oh, yes! Yes! Wow. yes. Let's give him a big hand, Sam, come back. Wow, no, what man, a great no, effort no. here <laughs> by Team Sun. Oh, I can't believe it. But now we're gonna move to Team Manu. 
And the character you'll be acting as is the Incredible Hulk from the Avengers. Your one minute starts now. Mama always said, stupid is as stupid does. Someone running and just telling him to run. Oh, it's come. Yeah. 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 Okay. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Oh, yeah, you know, it's like a Star Wars famous movie. Star Trek. Oh, oh it's Star Trek. As you wish, Buttercup Princess. As you wish, Princess Buttercup. Princess Bart? Yes, that's the one, Princess Bart. Great team effort here by Team Manu. Yeah, there you have it. Today was a tough game, but with our points, 80 to Manu and 77 to Team Sans. Our winner, Team Manu. Yeah! yeah. Woohoo! And like always, every team that wins on here goes away with winning prizes. We got our fresh t-shirts here for Team Manu and also our Westfield Mall vouchers. Yeah! So make sure you join me again next week, same time, on... How Fresh Are You? All right. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Veronica Pomee, and that's all I have for you today. But make sure you stay tuned for next week. There's plenty more coming. Keep it funky fresh, and I'll see you on the runway. Malolale Freshies, it's your boy, Jesse Havea, also known as Brita Filter, and I'm your Polynesian drag queen of New York City. Keep fresh, boo. <laughs> Shit, my bad. More of Via. <laughs> More of the concrete jungle with Via the Stallion when we come back from break. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Two for the culture.